Okay students, today we are going to study about dimensional analysis. So this particular chapter is one of the most important chapter in physics. Almost in all the entrance examination you will get one or two questions from this particular chapter. Uh, it is pretty simple only, it is not very complex, it has quite a lot of calculations, very interesting chapter. So we are going to see about dimensions of physical quantities. Before knowing about the dimensions of physical quantities, you should know about the basic fundamental units. You have already seen some of the lectures in this. Mass, length, time, ampere, temperature, luminous intensity and amount of substance. These are the various uh, fundamental quantities that we know. And we know already about derived units also. So what is a derived unit? Suppose if you see velocity. So velocity we know the formula is distance or displacement upon time. So we call it as d upon t. So this is a derived unit because you have time which is a fundamental unit and we have length which is a fundamental unit. These two are in ratio so you get velocity. We talk about acceleration. Acceleration is equal to velocity upon time. This is a derived unit. So these are all various derived units which we get. So we are going to see the dimension analysis of various derived formulas. So that is a way of dimensional analysis. So what is dimension analysis? How do we try to define this one? Any physical quantity, for example, I go back to the velocity formula itself called displacement upon time. If we say this particular formula in terms of the basic fundamental quantity, for example, displacement is called length, so we call it as length here, and time, we can say it as t. So we can write this one as length to the power of 1, time to the power of minus 1. So when we say this length in terms of a uh, power 1 and time to the power of minus 1, this is called the dimensional analysis of velocity. What is the dimensional analysis? It talks about the basic fundamental quantities which is length and time and it is raised to the power of this term that is called a dimensional formula for velocity. Let us do another example. Acceleration. We know it is called e velocity upon time. Now velocity we already know that this is the dimensional formula. Length and time minus 1 upon time so when this time goes to the numerator you get here length t minus 2 now length to the power of 1 t to the power of minus 2 this is the dimensional formula for acceleration so every dimensional formula we will be doing it in terms of the basic fundamental quantities length and time and maybe if it is mass and many other things also so these are all the fundamental units will be definitely coming. So that's the way it is. So seeing in this book you can see dimension analysis is the chapter. This is chapter number three in the uh, physics book and you can see the dimension definition. Thus the dimensions of a physical quantity are the powers to which the fundamental units are raised in order to obtain the derived unit of that quantity. So it talks about length, mass, time, these are the fundamental units raised to the power A, B and C. That's the way it is the dimension formula will take place. So basically within bracket you will find always the basic fundamental units only should be there. Length, mass, time, maybe it could be ampere also it could come or it could come as temperature also it could come as the theta value. So anything can be there. So this entire formula based on the fundamental quantities is called dimensional formula. So while writing a dimensional formula you will get any kind of the fundamental units. So we represent mass by m, length by l, t is for time, ampere it will be given as a, temperature if it comes then it will be theta, Luminous intensity if it comes, it is candela CD and you can write for amount of substance 
as mol that is mole so this is the basic parameters we'll be using within the brackets for any dimensional formula so here we are going to see a list of dimensional formulas and the basic parameters of the physical quantities are given here and the list is being made already and the formula we already know many of the formulas and we're going to calculate how the dimensional formula will work and we're going to finally do this one so in your notebook in your register you can divide it into four columns and you're going to write this first one is going to be the basic quantity which we name we have named the quantity maybe it could be area volume or density or velocity whatever it is it will go on and the formula based on this physical formula and we're going to finally derive the dimensional formula for this so you can go ahead and do this one this entire list of all the uh, formulas there are around 45 formulas all of them are very very important you have to learn this formula especially if you know this formula you can derive at any point of time so after this video after this lesson you have to take especially uh, devoted time to learn everything so it's very important going further down area length into breadth length we dip the we measure as distance breadth also distance and both of them are in meters so we can write it as length into length so it's going to be l2 so you can call it as l to the power of 2 so we can write it as m0 l2 t0 so this is the dimensional formula for area remember it is better to write it as mass length and time and whatever the dimension it comes as a power that only will be represented volume length breadth and height all of them are distance this is also distance this is also distance so we can measure it as length into length into length we know it is going to be l cube so we write this dimension formula as m0 l cube t0 we come to the next formula density mass upon volume we already know this one so it is mass and bottom is volume volume already we have seen this one l cube so when you write here within the bracket here how it will go this will go as m1 l when it goes up minus 3 and t0 so that's going to be the dimensional formula for density moving further down so we have velocity so velocity already i derived earlier also displacement or distance or you can say the same formula going to be for speed also so it's going to be length upon time so when we write here it is m0 l1 t minus 1 so that is going to be the formula for velocity the next one is acceleration velocity upon time change in velocity upon time v2 minus v1 upon time when we subtract two velocities v2 the final velocity minus initial velocity both the velocities finally give will give you and final answer as a velocity itself so we can write the numerator as velocity itself so what is the velocity dimension we already have here length t minus 1 upon time so you can write this one as m0 l t minus 2 that is the dimensional formula for acceleration next one is force force is mass into acceleration so mass into this same dimension we can put l t minus 2 so what is the final formula for force m1 l t minus 2 so this is the dimension formula for force this is very very important we will be using this one time and again it's better to memorize this formula m l t minus 2 it is for force now the next formula is work work we already know force into displacement force dimension already we have seen earlier m l t minus 2 this is the force formula into displacement that is l multiplying these two things you will get m l 2 t minus 2 this is the dimensional formula for work we can tell the same thing for energy also work on energy both of them they have the same si unit called joules 
So we can same, have the same uh, formula for work and energy. Acceleration due to gravity. Remember, we have already done one other acceleration before. So both of them, that is also acceleration. This is acceleration due to gravity. Both of them, they have the same SI unit. So it should have the same dimension. So we know it is going to be weight, that is force upon mass. So MLT minus 2, that is for force and mass, it gets cancelled. So you get LT minus 2 is the dimension formula for acceleration due to gravity. That is the same thing for acceleration also. The next one is power. Work upon time. Work. Otherwise it's energy. ML2 T minus 2. This is also something to be remembered. It will be coming time and again. ML2 T minus 2 upon T. Now this one also will go up. So you get here ML2 T minus 3. So that's going to be the dimension formula for power. Next one is linear momentum. So linear momentum is we is a formula that we already studied earlier mass into velocity so it, this, is a, this is quite simple mass multiplied by velocity is lt minus 1 so both of them combined together you get m1 l1 t minus 1 so that's linear momentum kinetic energy and potential energy now the energy is a formula already we have seen that one if that is dimension formula for energy, this also it is energy. It should have the same dimension but different formula. Force into displacement but here it is half mv square. The constant called half doesn't have any dimension. Now we have only mass then. Mass into velocity square. We know it is lt minus 1. The whole square. So put this two inside. So m1 L2 T minus 2 that is the dimension formula for kinetic energy the next one is potential energy mgh we already know this one mass into acceleration due to gravity into height acceleration due to gravity we already saw this one so m L T minus 2 into L so finally putting together you get here m L2 T minus 2 each and every dimension formulas are very very important you should know this dimension formulas maybe if you want to memorize it is okay but basically if you know this formulas you can easily derive this one the next set of formulas we are going ahead pressure the pressure formula we already know force upon area so force is a formula once again it's coming m l t minus 2 that is the dimension of force area is L2 so this L2 when it goes up maybe you can cancel this one and cancel this so it becomes M L minus 1 T minus 2 so that is the dimension formula for pressure impulse impulse is defined as force which acts for a short duration of time so it formula becomes force into time you will be studying this formula in 11th standard so for M L T minus 2 same formula for force into time put it together so it becomes M L T minus 1 so that is a formula for impulse moment of force you already studied this one in 10th standard force into force arm that's otherwise it is called distance so force is nothing but M L T minus 2 and force arm is length so it becomes ML2 T minus 2. Next one is force constant or spring constant. The formula is force upon length. This formula will be again coming in 11th standard. But this formula is there to note down the dimension. ML T minus 2 is force upon length. These two gets cancelled out. So M1 L0 T minus 2 force constant doesn't have any length in the formula stress it is having the same dimension as that of the pressure force upon area and here also it is force upon area so m l t minus 2 upon l2 so you get the same dimension as that of pressure 
so ml minus 1 t minus 2 now here we see strain strain has three different formulas one is called longitudinal strain volumetric strain and the next one is shearing strain well, longitudinal strain is change in length upon original length change in volume upon original volume that is called volumetric strain shearing strain is also change in the position so if you expand the length changes to the original length so that's the way it is so length upon length so both of them it gets cancelled out no dimension volume upon volume so both of them gets cancelled the L cube and L cube gets cancelled out no dimension here also length and length get cancelled out no dimension so for the entire of strain it is M0 L0 T0 all the three doesn't have any dimension the next formula is coefficient of elasticity this has three different formulas Young's modulus bulk modulus rigidity modulus all of them mean the same you can say in terms of three different names coefficient of velocity elasticity you can say that is a kind of a fixed number for any material or otherwise you can say it also as modulus of elasticity and if you see the modulus of elasticity there are of three varieties three types either you can call it as Young's modulus or bulk modulus or rigidity modulus but all all of them have the same formula stress upon strain you have the same formula stress upon strain we know the stress formula m l minus 1 t minus 2 it is the same formula for pressure and this one is no dimension it didn't have any dimension strain so it finally carries out the same dimension as that of pressure or as that of stress the next formula is surface tension surface tension we already studied in the previous class but the formula for this one is force upon length force is mlt minus 2 upon length now these two gets cancelled out so m l0 t minus 2 further down surface energy is another formula force upon area so m l t minus 2 upon l2 so now you are can try to calculate yourself it's quite easy now m l minus 1 t minus 2 that is the dimension formula for surface energy the next one is velocity gradient what is velocity gradient it is change in velocity upon perpendicular distance in other words only velocity upon distance so it is going to be l t minus 1 upon l so these two gets cancelled out so m0 l0 t minus 1 that is velocity gradient we move to the next formula coefficient of viscosity coefficient of viscosity is how thick is the liquid and there is a parameter there is a particular figure which is given number is given for the viscous flow of any liquid you will be studying in this um, 11th standard itself this particular object of fluids and how it flows and coefficient of viscosity comes under this uh, topic the formula actually talks about force upon area and velocity gradient so force upon area is already pressure pressure upon velocity gradient if you say itself it is okay so we find we have already seen about velocity gradient what is velocity gradient velocity upon distance so we can easily try to come up with this formula m l t minus 2 upon l2 into this is t minus 1 so once you try to finish this final calculation so this length and this one will get cancelled here also one will get cancelled and here it will become minus 1 so you get here m 
L minus 1 T minus 1. This is coefficient of viscosity. The next formula is gravitational constant. We already know this particular uh, constant called gravitational constant. We have studied in earlier classes. Force is equal to G, the universal gravitational constant into the product of two masses and the distance square. If you want to write only what is gravitational constant, cross multiply F into R square upon M1 into M2. So this particular formula, it goes for the dimensional calculation. So it is M L T minus 2, that is for force. Distance square, it is L2 upon mass 2 times and M into M. So putting all finally together, this mass and this mass will get cancelled out. So this mass will go to the numerator M minus 1. Both the L parameters will be multiplied L cube T minus 2. This is for gravitational constant. The next one is gravitational potential. These all these parameters, it all comes, all the three formulas, it comes under one chapter called gravitation. So gravitation potential means the work done per unit mass. The energy which is going to be spent on bringing one mass from one place to another, that is called gravitational potential. So work we already know, ML2 T minus 2 divided by mass. Mass gets cancelled out. So L2 T minus 2. You can put M0 also here. So M0 L2 T minus 2. The next one is gravitational field strength. Force upon mass. So it is M L T minus 2 upon mass. Mass gets cancelled out. So what is the formula? M0 L T minus 2. This formula also it reflects on acceleration formula, something close to that. So you should have the SI unit as meter per second square. The next one is frequency. We know this one, 1 upon time, very simple formula, 1 upon t. So it's going to be m0 l0 t minus 1. The next one is also very very simple, wavelength, we know it is just a distance, it is just length. So m0 L T zero so L one the next formula is radius of gyration this is all related with something to do with rotational motion there is a chapter called rotational motion will be coming when a body rotates with a fixed axis so this term it comes there it is the formula is quite simple it is just distance distance from the center of mass to the axis of rotation. Dimensionally it is pretty simple, it is just L so M0 L1 T0 so that is the dimensional formula for this. Another thing is called moment of inertia. The moment of inertia is something to do with a body which is rotating on a fixed axis of rotation. So when you have fixed a body in an axis of rotation and it rotates along with the axis of rotation then this body will have its mass and there is a center of gravity will be there there is a central place where the entire mass will be concentrated this distance is called d distance here mass into distance square it is called the moment of inertia so distance from the axis of rotation to the center of mass is called this distance so you get here the other way the dimensional formula is quite simple m l2 so it becomes m1 l2 t0 i was just trying to say what is the moment of inertia in a brief statement later on we'll be studying much more in detail angle sin theta cos theta tan theta all of them they come in the same bracket arc of the length length of the arc upon radius so length upon length both of them get cancelled it is called no dimension so you get here m0 l0 t0 next one is angular velocity angle upon time suppose a body is going in a circular path with the radius fixed radius here 
so it makes an angle quickly and it moves in the circle in a fixed interval of time so that speed in which it goes in the circular motion that is called angular velocity so it is called theta upon time so theta is no dimension so m0 l0 t0 upon t so you will get here m0 l0 t minus 1 is going to be the dimensional formula for angular velocity next it is angular acceleration what is angular acceleration change in angular velocity change in angular velocity upon time so it makes it as this formula upon time so m0 l0 t minus 1 upon t it makes it as m0 l0 t minus 2 so that makes it as angular acceleration now we are going to see a few more formulas in the same topic of rotational motion angular momentum moment of inertia into angular acceleration moment of inertia we already know it is m l2 angular acceleration it is t minus 2 combined together m1 t l2 t minus 2 that is angular momentum now the next set of formulas we are going to see about heat specific heat latent heat and all these things so we know specific heat formula it is q is equal to m c t where c is called the specific heat q is called the heat energy so if you try to take only c it is heat energy upon mass into temperature heat energy upon mass into temperature this is called a rise in temperature so temperature you can call it as theta also so m l2 t minus 2 is energy upon mass and we can call it as theta putting together mass will get cancelled out it is m0 l2 t minus 2 theta minus 1 now look at this one this is the first formula where you are getting theta here so this formula comes into a, a different configuration here so this one becomes as m0 l2 t minus 2 and theta minus 1 uh, in between the heat formula we have one more torque which has been which should have been there in this one after 34 it should be 35 but it's okay torque force into distance there is another formula for torque it is moment of inertia multiplied by angular acceleration so this is torque is equal to i omega this is angular velocity should have been there here okay so this formula it should have been angular velocity so it is l minus 1 t minus 1 so it will be t minus 1 so angular momentum is m l 2 t minus 1 so whereas this one will be m l 2 there is moment of inertia and multiplied by t minus 2 so you get here m l 2 t minus 2 is the dimensional formula for torque now we once again we are coming back to heat here heat this is latent heat latent heat is equal to the heat is equal to mass into latent heat this is a formula heat energy is equal to mass into latent heat so what is latent heat the value of mass will go down so heat energy that is q divided by mass so heat energy we already know m l 2 t minus 2 is heat energy upon mass it gets cancelled out so it becomes here as l 2 t minus 2 and m0 we can also put here now this is heat without a value of temperature there is no theta here m0 l2 t minus 2 we will go ahead for the next formula called coefficient of linear expansion in this one whenever we heat a body the length increases that is in ratio with the original length we can compare it 
into the rise in temperature. So length upon length into theta here that is temperature rise that is theta 2 minus theta 1. So you cancel this two length so you get here m0 l0 t0 theta minus 1. So that is going to be the formula for coefficient of linear expansion. The next formula is thermal capacity. The formula is specific heat into mass. So specific heat formula already we have seen this one. So it is L2 T minus 2 and theta minus 1. We have already known this formula multiplied by mass. So it's going to be M L2 T minus 2 and theta minus 1. So that is the dimension formula for thermal capacity. Quite an important formula. The next one is coefficient of thermal conductivity. Suppose you have a material and you just heat only in this one end. This heat after you heat this particular place of the material the heat will transfer to the next end. So as the, the heat transfers this will be called as a thermal conductivity based on the material. So thermal conductivity is a constant for every material. So whatever the material you are using based on that material you will have a thermal conductivity. So it is K is the thermal conductivity formula. Heat which is given is equal to thermal conductivity into area temperature difference to the time taken upon the distance. So K keep it here and take all the things to the next side. Q into D. This is heat energy into distance. Area into temperature difference into time. So Q is heat. D is distance. A is area. Temperature is here. Time. So putting together the formula heat and distance upon L2 theta and time. So here you can cancel it. You can get only one L. This L also will get cancelled out here. And you can get here as M L. This T will go up here. So it will become T minus 3 and theta minus 1. That is a formula for thermal conductivity. The next formula is gas constant. Gas constant it comes under the formula called PV is equal to R into T. This is for a standard quantity of 1 mole. Pressure, volume, gas constant and temperature. So R is equal to PV upon temperature. This is pressure. We already know the formula for pressure. So it is going to be M L minus 1 T minus 2 into volume is L cube and temperature is theta. So putting together you get here M L2 T minus 2 theta minus 1. This will be the formula for gas constant. Similarly there are few other constants which will be coming in heat chapter. Planck's constant. Planck's constant there is no C here. Planck's constant is called energy upon frequency. It is M L2 T minus 2 upon frequency it is T minus 1. So when this T minus 1 is cancelled so you get here M L2 T minus 1 will be the final formula. Boltzmann constant. This is also another formula which will be coming. Energy upon temperature. So M L2 T minus 2 upon theta. So it is M L2 T minus 2 theta minus 1. The last formula for this damage analysis, so all this formula finally it's getting over, Vn's constant. Vn's constant is a formula which is a constant for different materials, wavelength into temperature. Wavelength we know already is length and theta is a temperature. So it's going to be L1 theta to the power of 1. So with this the dimension analysis all the formulas it gets over. We have finished 44 formulas. Please make sure you memorize all these formulas so that you can derive the calculation as well as you can get the dimension formula correctly. Okay children.